Hey guys, this is going to be a guide on how to get a Hackintosh up and running on your PC. A Hackintosh is Mac OS X running on your PC without any external modifications. You just get a modified image and you install it to your PC and it runs normally without too many issues. So what I'm going to do first of all is show you how this works. So if I go to about this Mac here, you'll see uh, I'm running OS 10 Yosemite, 10.10.3 processor, 2.2 gig Core i3, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, 8 Intel HD graphics, 512 megabytes, and I've got to say, guys, really, it runs so much better than Windows 8. Like it's just it's almost as if my laptop is optimized for this system. I've got a Lenovo um, Z570. Was quite a well, it's a pretty decent laptop actually. It's been upgraded to eight gigs of RAM, and it runs pretty much like you'd expect a Mac to run. There's no slowdowns, no issues. If I click on Firefox, it's loaded. But yeah, it's um. So yeah, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about compatibility. Now, there's a few things you need to know about the Hackintosh world if you're going to think about installing this. First of all, if you're running an AMD build or an AMD machine, no. Don't even bother following this tutorial for the simple reason that um, compatibility is very, very limited because um, real Apple hardware doesn't use AMD generally as a general rule. Um, sometimes they'll use AMD um, APUs, accelerated processing units, or they'll sometimes use AMD graphics card. There slightly less troublesome but if you've generally got an AMD processor like a um, bulldozer or any of that or an FX the 8 core ones generally don't tend to steer well away from this sort of thing because it can cause quite a few issues there are some modified kernels out there on the internet that will allow you to run OS 10 but really you really only only want to be attempting this if you've got Intel because they they'll run on the, the majority of the times they run on the standard kernel Processors wise, you're going to want anything from a Core 2 Duo upwards if you've got Pentium D, Pentium Dual Core, Celeron, no no, they're not really supported. Well, Cel Celeron's kind of are to a certain extent because they're sort of, they run on the Intel Core architecture. But you're generally going to want something Core 2 Duo or newer. Um, hardware, so RAM, why do I say hardware? That's It is hardware. <laughs> RAM, you're going to want. Um, Two gigabytes at minimum, but I recommend four for smooth operation. Eight will do just fine. Sixteen, thirty-two, all that stuff is pretty good. Graphics-wise, you'll be fine on um, integrated graphics like Intel HD graphics, all that stuff. You'll be fine running that. There'll be no issues. It'll just install the drivers. Um, Nvidia cards again. They'll be fine normally. AMD cards. Generally alright. Graphics really is not really an area of issue. Generally most graphics cards tend to work out the box for some or if they don't work out the box, there's good, there's drivers on the um internet there are loads of Hackintosh drivers available for you. Um if you're running a laptop Hackintosh, you're gonna need to want Wi Fi and this is where Hackintoshing becomes an issue because there are generally only two or three Wi Fi cards that work with modification on this. I happen to have one of them. It is an Atheros um, AR9285. It didn't work out the box but all I needed to do was go into Finder. I needed to go to my Macintosh hard drive, System, um, Library, Extensions, and then there was a couple of files on the um, IO um, I can't remember where it was. IO 802011 something. It's to do with the um, architecture of the Wi Fi. But generally, there's a couple more. I can't find it now, but there's a couple of things you need to change in order for it to work. You need to um, change some. Um, I think you need to change some package list file in it in order for Airport to work with it because you need to change a model, change the model number in the settings. But once you've got. So generally. There are only a few laptop um, Wi-Fi cards that work. Um, generally, Atheros, a few Atheros ones work. Broadcom or Intel or anything like that. 
generally don't work. So if you are going to run a Hackintosh and you haven't got one of the select few cards, I mean, I was very lucky and I have got one that worked. But if you don't, generally you're going to have to change your Wi-Fi card or get um, just a USB adapter that works with these. Although that is another problem in itself because not many USB adapters work. Um, CD DVD drives, again, they work fine. Apart from if you're using Apple's DVD player, that generally comes up with an issue for some reason. It does on my Hackintosh. So CD DVD drives fine. Any hard drive or any SSD again works fine because they're just standardised. They don't they don't use um, special Apple hard drives in their system. They do use Apple SSDs, however, but any SSD will will work fine. So compatibility wise, generally it's quite a broad range of hardware. Most Ethernet works fine. So if you have got an Ethernet um, port in your laptop, you can use that until you've got Wi-Fi access up and running on it. So yeah, compatibility does work fine. There's um, not many issues on my system. I think the only thing that doesn't actually work is the um, SD card reader. But yeah, so now guys, let's get on to the actual um, install process of this Hackintosh machine. So first of all, what you're going to want to do, obviously, is now that you've checked your compatibility and you know that it works, you're going to want to type in on Google Naresh Yosemite your, your, yours might, yes, well done. No, she sent me. You want to click on the first link, and what this does, or what this does, what it is, it's a modified distro or distribution of OS X that is modified to work on a PC because it uses custom kernel extensions. Um, don't think it uses custom kernels, but it uses custom drivers, all that stuff. So it'll work out the box pretty much with your PC. You're gonna to want to download this. Um, you're going to read through the instructions, it's got MBR patched, which is good, it's got LGA 2011 partial support, so if you've got one of the newer socket um, LGA 2011 CPUs, I think they're that um, Ivy Bridge and Haswell architecture, if you've got those then it should be alright, MBR is patched, so you can install um, this onto an MBR disk if you're running a legacy BIOS computer, because normally... Um, vanilla installations don't work out the box with uh, Master Boot Record. Auto installs the audio kex. Kex is another word. Whenever you see kex, it just means kernel extension. So don't get confused with that, guys. Auto auto installs the kex, which are drivers. Auto installs the network drivers, audio drivers. Installs Clover and the Chameleon Bootloader. Many more patches and fixes, etc., etc. You'll love it. You need an eight gigabyte pen drive or more. An existing computer with Windows or Mac on it, obviously. Um, so you want to click on the da download Naresh Yosemite image. And just click on download here. Really is quite a simple process, guys. There's not much involved in it. Once you've checked compatibility and all that, generally, there's not really an issue. Uh, the download is locked, however. You, get, you are going to have to wait a minute unless you want to do all these, but there's no point. Uh, so yeah, I'll be back in uh, 44. 42 seconds when this download has unlocked. Alright guys, the download has been unlocked. You'll see here, it has boot disk utility, restore yosemite.package, transmac.zip, uh, here we are, yosemite 10.10.0 or 10.10.1. You can want to download 10.10.1 partly because it's just a lot more stable than a normal, um, well not normal, but the 10.10.0 um, image. Um, there's two options here as you can see. You've got bog standard ISO or you've got a DMG. DMG is basically an image file, so IMG, but just change for the Mac format. Um, I'd recommend this for the simple reason that everyone, this is the image that you put into a USB pen drive. Pretty much everyone nowadays has an 8GB pen drive or higher. If you don't, then ugh, you need to go and get one really because they're very, very useful devices. Um, the ISO would still recommend because uh, I tend to have less issues booting with ISOs on my particular laptop than I do with booting um, disk images. I can't actually boot from a U from um, the Yosemite USB on my laptop. Nothing works. I can't change USB sticks, I, so I can't boot. For me, I use the ISO, but there's an issue with the ISO because it's five gigabytes. And for all you techie people out there, you'll know that DVD is only four point seven. So what you're going to have to do is either download this, the ISO, put it on a dual layer DVD-R, 
or simply get the disk image, write it to USB, and you're good to go. Um, but for, but personally, I choose the DMG. So you want to click download that. Download starts in 15 seconds. As you can see, it's only 398 kilobytes because it's a torrent file. You're going to want to get uTorrent or BitTorrent or Transmission or any other torrent client. Install it, and then you're going to download the um, you're going to download the um, DMG file. So just open that. Right. So when you've downloaded it. It should be in your download. You've got two options for transferring it onto your account. If you have a Mac, you can use the built in disk utility for this. You don't have to download anything. So you go to disk utility. You want to plug in your USB stick. At the side here, it will come up. And what you want to do, I'm just using my CD, um, I'm just using my hard drive. No, use my CD drive as a standard thing. But your USB will be there. You want to go on to images. And then it'll say burn, and you want to burn that image onto your thing. It actually, wait, window. Yeah, so you want to go and um, scan image for restore or burn, I think, whatever. And you're going to do it that way. You don't need to install any software for this, but for Windows, you've got two choices. You can either download Win32. Disk Imager, which is what I like to use because it tends to work best for me. Download that and then write the DMG onto the USB stick. Or the most tried and tested methods is Transmac. Transmac is software where it allows you to open the disk image, see what's inside it, and then write it directly to the USB stick without having to modify any files. It's a great way of, it's very convenient really. You just transfer it straight from the raw file onto your USB stick and you're good to go. So guys, really simple as that. You've got two choices on Windows, one on Mac. So once you have your image um, written onto your pen drive or burned onto your CD, you're going to want to boot from it. Um, you, so you're just, go, just going to want to boot from it. The install process really isn't tricky at all. It's effectively just um, running through it like a normal Windows install. You click in Windows. Um, so once you've installed it, obviously, this is... Um, getting it up and running after the install is the trickiest bit. You're going to want to boot from the USB again. And it will normally um, say in the top corner. Um, and normally say in the top corner, like configuring your Hackintosh install or whatever. The Nairesh distro will do it for you. Um, so you don't really need to fiddle with anything. Um, but yeah, guys, that is literally about it. Installing the Hackintosh really is very easy in this modern day and age with all the um, automated things, you've got distros and all that. So let's just go through it again. You want to download the image from the website, you're going to want to put it on your computer, you, you're going to get those two programs which I've told you about, you can write them onto, you're going to write, you can use them to write the image onto a USB stick or burn it onto your um, DVD. Um, there's loads of burning software out there, I don't really need to cover that, there's loads. Um, and then you're just going to want to install it, you're going to leave it. Um, and yeah, Naresh will install the bootloader, all the kernel extensions you need. If you do need a Wi-Fi um, driver and you know your Wi-Fi does work, there's loads of tutorials on the internet. But yeah guys, that is about it. Um, my Hackintosh does run really well. You can download apps from the App Store. I have Final Cut Pro here, After Effects, VLC, Camtasia. All apps run fine on this. There's nothing that you need to really do. Nothing you really need to do. So, yeah, guys. Um, that is really it. If you've got any questions, um, of course, leave them in the comments below. And I'll reply, hopefully, to your message and get back to you with a solution. But this has been Daniel Keogh um, with the Hackintosh tutorial. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button because it really helps me a lot. Share it to your friends, anyone who wants to watch this. Like it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.